Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great and as always for anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. Today we are continuing on with our X9 Draft League content. We are into week 7 and this week we're going up against Visually. So Viz, as he's known, uh, is a very solid player. Started off in singles and has recently transitioned over to VG. Doing amazing stuff, does a lot of rank ladder things as well and uh, just a very all-round solid player. Definitely check his stuff out aside from this video. Obviously, all of his socials are linked down in the description below. So you want to check out his side of the battle and uh, see his take on things as they play out in week seven. This week, as I say, we're going up against the Antarctic Age Slashes. So that's his team name. Um, and I'll obviously throw his team up on the screen now so we can take a quick look and have a rundown. He's got the Indeedy female, uh, the Porygon Z, Dracovish, Concordor, Alakazam, Gengar, Ditto. Bishop, Slurpuff, Landorus, Incarnate, and Pikachu. So, pretty solid draft, you know. There is a lot of threatening Pokemon in there. And, you know, on face value, I'll be the first to admit it, it doesn't look as strong as some of maybe the other teams in the draft. But I think it's deceivingly strong. We'll start off with the redirection. It's a great pick with Ndidi Female. Probably one of the best redirectors that we've got access to in Sword and Shield with the Psychic Terrain as well as an added bonus. It's a very good, versatile Pokemon. Can be quite threatening on the offensive side as well with that psychic terrain boost expanding force is probably its kind of main attacking option that it would rely on uh, outside of possibly something like mystic fire that it can use as well to lower special attack and then dazzling gleam but mainly going to be there to kind of protect its partnering pokemon and he's got plenty of those pokemon that really appreciate that redirection support in abundance and will make it extremely difficult for us starting off with the porygon z as you'll know if you watch the channel, it's not one of my favorite Pokemon because I actually hate playing against Porygon Z. It's obnoxiously powerful, um, it can do so much damage and uh, it's normally paired with redirection. We've got max strike, it can lower speed, so speed control as well. And it just hits like a truck, like whatever, even like stuff that resists it, it's hitting so hard. Especially when you pair it up with like helping hand support from Ndidi. So we've got to be very careful around the Porygon Z. It's going to be one of the main threats uh, that I have to watch out for this week. Um, and probably one of the things that I would expect him to bring with that Ndidi female that I expect to max as well. Um, so big, big warning signs around that one. Dracovish as well, something that we need to watch out for for sure because it's definitely you know it's not going to appreciate the sun but again it's going to be able to take those fire and grass type attacks that we rely on so heavily uh, really well and um, it doesn't really like to face things like Mimikyu or Azumarill so we do have that fairy kind of type in that would help us out um, against Dracovish but again we can't let the speed control that the Viz has got access to get too out of control because if that Dracovish gets in a good position regardless of the sun being up or not if it's got something like a choice band and you you're stacking that up with the with vicious rend it's going to get really dangerous very quickly and it'll just be able to kind of cut through most of our team pretty easily and uh, then we move down to the concordor now again i could see the concordor coming this week because although it doesn't feel like it's got an amazing matchup against our team it definitely performs very well in a trick room and it's probably one of the only pokemon that he's got access to that can perform a kind of trick room role relatively well if not excel in trick room so um it's going to make it difficult to get rhyperia going and uh, we do have obviously intimidate support that we can help kind of mitigate the attack power that the concordo has got you'd expect it to probably go with something like um, a flame orb or a toxic orb get that guts boost um, and really start taking advantage of the trick room We'll get into some ways that I've, I've kind of built my team up around these threats uh, when we get into our team, of course. Then we move down to Alakazam. Um, I don't know if we'll see the Alakazam. It's definitely something that we need to be concerned about because it is probably, uh, well, it is the fastest Pokemon that he's got access to uh, naturally on his team. Um, it hits 190, I think. Is it 190? I'm pretty sure it's 190 or 189 speed stat, raw speed stat. 189, I think. Um, so, yeah. And pair that with the psychic terrain it's got access to imprison so it can stop trick room going up pretty easily um the only downside to alakazam it's pretty frail so it's not going to be able to sit on the field for ages and take a lot of attacks so we've got to really pummel it if we do get the opportunity to do that um, and then you've got Gengar, I do see coming because it's got access to speed control without having to max an icy wind. And it's got Trick Room and Imprison, so it can cause us all sorts of issues and pair super nicely with Bishop as well. So you get that icy wind um, or sludge wave and assurance combination going between those two. 
We've seen it in Sword and Shield series, series five or series six. Did very well in one of those. It might have been even earlier. Um, so it's something that we need to be aware of for sure. Uh, it's a combination that does scare me. Probably one of the more scarier combinations that we've got um, on, on Viz's team. Obviously, you're not forgetting about the ditto that he's got. Bit of a wild card. Don't know if we'll see it coming to this match. I feel like it's there to kind of compensate some some other matchups where you probably see teams that have a lot more setup than what we do. But again, it could come. It could be a good mitigation tool against Rhyperia. Say if we get our weakness policy procced or something along those lines, then the ditto can come and copy that and then just kind of hopefully stall out the trick room in time and, and you know, take us down and close the match out pretty easily. Um, and then we've got Slurpuff. Which is an interesting one on this team. Another Pokemon that's going to benefit from the Psychic terrain, of course, with that um, Unburden ability. Give it the Psychic Seed. Um, and then its speed doubles and it's got a lot of support and options um, that can cause us a lot of issues. Obviously, if we do bring things like Scrafty, got to watch out for Play Rough and things like that that it can throw up. As well as all the support and options that Slurpuff does have access to. Um, I don't think it gets Belly Drum anymore. So that's a plus for us. I'm pretty sure it doesn't. I think it lost it in Sword and Shield. Then moving on to the last two Landorus Incarnate another big threat I can definitely see this coming I would say if I'm banking on anything coming to this match it's going to be that Pokemon outspeeds Charizard threatens us with sheer force rock slides stone edges and it also threatens Venusaur as well with um, max air streams and things like that so yeah very good Pokemon base 101 speed uh, sheer force life orb candidate uh, can just do a lot of damage and it's definitely something that you would see maxing um, and uh, again Gengar going to be one of those Pokemon that can support it pretty well with that uh, with that good base 110 speed and icy wind um, and trick room of course and then Pikachu on the end which gives lightning rod support to the team and a fake out user as well and another option as a maximon don't know if we'll see it come to this match um it doesn't feel like it would do too well against that team in general. I think Venusaur does very well against it. Rhyperia does very well against it. Pikachu hates Trick Room. Thunder Wave, Paralysis don't like Trick Room. So, I mean, uh, in that respect, I've not really thought too much about Pikachu. Maybe that comes to bite us. But that's Viz's team in a nutshell. There are some of my thoughts, and we'll move over now and have a look at the team that we are bringing this week. So, I was pretty much really quite scared of um, just the Gengar and Alakazam potentially coming out as leads. Also, the redirection scares me, so we need a way to like hit his team pretty hard. Uh, and for that reason, I went with Charizard. We went pretty bulky. We don't need to speed ourselves too much, so we just outspeed Alakazam by one point. Um, if he's got any Scarf users on his side of the field, then it makes things a little bit more tricky. Uh, but Heat Wave in the Sun will do a phenomenal amount of damage. We don't need to max, um, and we get around redirection uh, with that Solar Power boost that we've got in the Sun Up and Heat Wave. With the Scarf outspeeding potentially everything before he can move uh, makes things a lot easier to deal with. Uh, so that that's an option. Um, so the, the primary idea behind this is lead Charizard Torkoal and then switch directly into something like Scrafty, which will give Charizard a little bit more support. And we've got the option as well. If we're in a decent spot and that works out, we can always max Charizard um, and get some speed control for something, I don't know, like like Rhyperia or something like that late game. I don't know. Fire Pledge works nicely as a different option. If we're really caught out game one, we've got a lot of options that we can turn to and, and try and mix things up a bit. It means that we don't need the Torkoal out on the field to start the game. We can go for that fast Fire Pledge, Grass Pledge, and then potentially stack up either... Um, G Max Vine Lash or uh, G Max Fire Charizard move and stack that that residual damage so it'll be like a quarter of damage for four turns uh, for for his side of the field, which is going to be so valuable, you know. Um, so there is that option. Dragon Pulse is there for Dracovish specifically, and Air Slash there specifically, really for the Concorder if we need it. And we'll move on to Venusaur. We have got a Pai Yappa Berry on the Venusaur this week. It's a Psychic Resist Berry. We went pretty bulky on the Venusaur. Just so if we are maxed with the Pai Yappa Berry, we can take a combination of Max Mindstorm from Timid Life Orb Alakazam. And we can also take the Expanding Force from the uh, Indeedy as well. So Venusaur going to be able to stick around on the field for at least one turn, even if they double up into us, which might create a little bit of room for our partnering Pokemon with maybe Trick Room or something like that to get the Trick Room up and give us a bit more of an advantage going forward. Um, so that is that. Not really too flashy with the moves. We need Grass Pledge if we're playing it with Flyer Pledge with the Charizard. Uh, it makes a lot of sense. And the thing with the Pledge moves is as soon as Charizard moves, 
uh, the next pledge move will skip all priority brackets um you know speed order and it'll go directly after the fire pledge which is pretty nice so it means that venus hawk can kind of get the jump and that's what i was meaning before with not needing Tokol on the field to get that chlorophyll boost uh, and then sludge bomb earth power with the other options with protect i just feel like we don't need sleep powder in this match it would be handy but i think a lot of players are going to kind of prepare for that so i'm opting not to go for it and the protect i think will be a little bit more valuable in being able to kind of just preserve it and get a better board position if we find ourselves in a bad situation and we need it then we move on to scrafty we've got the assault fest this week it makes a lot of sense there's a lot of special attackers um can expect things like dazzling gleam from things like Ndidi, Gengar, Alakazam. Um, there's lots of threats on that side. If you look at his team, majority of it can really conceivably be more special than physical. So it makes sense to go with the Assault Vest. Went pretty bulky though as well. So we've got um, an Impish. No, we haven't. We've got a Calm Nature on Scrafty this week, but we've still got a lot of defense uh, investment as well to take things like minus one, Conqueror, Cross Combat, um, so that will help snarl there to reduce special attack obviously intimidate there got to be careful around the the bishop which has um defiant but we can take a plus one iron head from an adamant bishop so that does help and then a drain punch should be able to knock it out if it is something like dark glasses and not a sash um, and then we move on to mimikyu mimikyu this week we're going with the psychic seed now this could be another candidate for us to maybe max if we wanted to um i feel like the ghost typing and the fairy typing help out a lot I expect Viz to go with something like Imprison Trick Room for sure. So it's going to make it very difficult to get a Trick Room up early game. I think we're going to have to go for a late game and a kind of a cleanup crew. Mimikyu, great against the team. You know, this Ghost Typing helps out against Gengar, Alakazam, um, and a bunch of other stuff. The Fairy Typing kind of complements it because then you can go after stuff like Bishop. You can go after stuff like um, Conkledur pretty hard. Um, and we've got enough attack investment to, to hit KO. Um, a ball 252, 252 in DD um, with Max Starfall, which is very useful because he doesn't have Intimidate on his team. So if we can get rid of the in DD early game, then it makes it easier to kind of approach the rest of the team and we don't need to worry about that. Uh, Move set, Phantom Force, Play Rough, they're just there. Obviously, Phantom Force, we could have went Shadow Claw, we could have went Shadow Sneak. Shadow Sneak is a bit risky because the Psychic Terrain is likely going to be up on the field, so that would be blocked anyway. Um, and Shadow Claw isn't as powerful if we're maxed, so that was the reason. Will O Wisps there, it's nice to shut things like Bishop down if we get the opportunity to, uh, in particular because obviously that Defiant is going to be a little bit of a problem uh, for us, so if we can burn it, it makes it a lot easier to manage. Um, and Trick Room is there to support the Torkoal which is coming up next, and the Rhyperia after that. So Tokol, we went to Citrus Berry um, with a, what is it, a relaxed nature, so a minus speed, and we've also got a bit of defense investment in defense and special defense um, to allow us to take those big special attacks because we need to be able to take those with Tokol. We don't want to just get wiped out uh, straight away. Move set, we went Iron Defense, Body Press, Iron Defense, allows us to take on things like Dracovish in the sun. If we can get an iron defense off before it comes in and the sun's up, we can beat it with body press. And the same goes for something like Conkledur as well. Um, so Heat Wave hits everything on the team for pretty good damage, except the Dracovish, which we can kind of cover with body press. So we're not like going to be locked out against anything in particular. And then we round off with Rhyperia uh, with the weakness policy. Uh, we've got a Imp... Uh, no... Yeah, Impish. Impish Rhyperia. Here. Should be Impish. Maybe should be relaxed. Maybe should be. But we've got an Impish one here. Anyway, it is going to be minus speed um, with the weakness policy. It's going to have enough bulk to be able to take Dracovish. Banded Ficious Rend in the sun if we're maxed and then return with a knockout onto it with Max Quake. It can deal with pretty much most things on the team. We need Ice Punch there to help with the Landorus Incarnate because otherwise we're kind of relying on Rock Slide or Max Rockfall, which aren't ideally the best things to be relying on. Whereas Ice Punch or Max Hailstorm will give us the, the a route to being able to knock out the, um, the Landorus 
like in one shot, which is always very useful. Uh, solid rock this week though, uh, no lightning rod, no need to worry about the Pikachu, I don't feel, and that wraps the team up. So that is the team in a nutshell, hopefully it makes sense, I know it's a little bit shorter today, but hopefully I do like to kind of cover the team before we get into the match. Um, and what we'll do now is hook up with Viz, and uh, we'll be back when we jump into game one. Okay, here we are, Viz is selecting the rules, so we'll be into the match in a minute. It's going to be interesting to see what he picks. Let's do the good luck, have fun, and um, this is going to be good. Yeah, I'm interested to see what he brings. Obviously, we need to select our team. I need to start putting together some Series 10 teams on here. I've only got one at the minute, but we will. Here we go. Viz. So, are we going to see? Are we going to see the Alakazam? I imagine Gengar Bishop, Lyanderus Incarnate, Conqueror Indeedee, and... Either PZ or Dracovish. Let's see how close we are. Okay, here we go. Viz, good luck, have fun, my friends. Everyone, check out Viz's side of the battle. All his stuff is linked down in the description below, all his socials and things like that. Um, we've got the Slurpuff, the Indeedy female, the Ditto, Gengar, Bishop, and Porygon Z. So Porygon Z, not something we want to see, but again, uh, quite surprised there's no Landorus here. Uh, very centric around the um, psychic terrain, of course. Um, but we've got that Gengar Bishop combination that does scare me quite a bit. I think we will go with the Charizard because I think I think for this first game we'll go quite safe. Uh, we'll bring Scrafty and then I think if we, you know, if we clean suit the, I think we got Venusaur because not Alakazam makes it a lot easier to deal with. I think, yeah. And then it doesn't mean we need to set the Trick Room up. Which also, you know, the PZ, I didn't mention this in Team Preview, PZ has access to Trick Room. So we'll lock in with that. I think we go with that. Our original mode, it was the first idea I had when putting a team together against Viz. I think the Charizard with the Scarf um, is quite devastating to most things. He, he's got no wide guard on his team. So that Heat Wave, as long as it hits in the sun, it can just rip through everything that he's got access to and like if we can steal a game early on then we can change things up for game two um and hopefully kind of clinch this week because that would take us to five five two i think i believe which would be amazing but we can't think too much about scores at the minute we've got to concentrate on what we're doing right now and it is pz and gengar the worry would be if we see scarf pz scarf pz would worry me quite a lot But we get a sun up. And we'll just go for it. We'll go for it. We can't we can't hesitate. Um I think I will switch into Scrafty though right now. Preserve Torkoal. Because Torkoal could be a lifesaver at the end, especially if something like Ditto's in the back and they try and like copy Venusaur or something like that. Uh Torkoal could be quite handy for us. The other option would have been obviously staying in and just double heat waving. Heat waving. It gets around any sort of sashes that my opponent has. But at least we're going to have like an active fake out the next turn, potentially, onto the PZ if it doesn't max here. Okay, so talk or switching. Let's see. If we can get a double knockout here, that's so huge for us. But there's so many different variations that we've got to worry about going into this turn. Let's see. Okay. White hair. Oh, eject pack. Okay. Gengar gone out. Now this could be there. This could be very big for us. So what's Gengar got? Ooh, indeedy. Okay. That's fine. Don't mind that at all. You know the uh, is it PZ? I don't think the PZ is ma is it maxing? Do we not know yet? It's maxing. Okay. This is still all. Is it alright? Is it alright? I don't know. Depends where you attack into. You have to go after the Charizard here. You have to. Depends how much the Heat Wave does the NDD. It depends how it's been trained. But the Heat Wave should still do an absolute chunk to this PZ. Yeah. Yeah, that's good damage. That's good damage. Max Strike coming out. Where are we going? Into the Charizard. Bye bye, Char. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So, let's life orb. <clears throat> I 
I think we have to go Venu here. I think we have to. I have to. I worry about help in hand. So I think what we'll do is we have to max. We could max God here and just snarl. That's definitely an option. It means that Venusaur has a way easier time. But do you go after, yeah. Or do you go after Scrafty here? Because Scrafty could just drain punch that PZ. We could just see a redirect as well, you know? We could just attack. But I think we see help in hand. I th Like honestly, I think we see help in hand. Max strike. So I'm gonna go full. Max guard and snarl and hope we don't get like absolutely caught out by this. And although we're wasting a turn of our max, it's gonna be worth it, I think. Oh, has that Gengar got? It wants the eject pack. Please chase down the Venusaur. Okay, redirection, which is fine. That that's all right. That's all right. Perfect. Okay, that's that's fine. We can we deal with that. We'll take that all day. We'll take that all day because now that PZ is nowhere near as as threatening as it, as it was previously. And what we can do is we can clear the field now with a vine lash. And the worry would be here if we see the PZ protect this turn. Although I don't think it really does him any good. Um, and a Drain Punch will get the, the DD. I think we got Crunch. Or do we just go Snarl again? Nah, I'd like to get rid of the PZ. If he goes follow me, we get rid of the, the NDD. Yeah, okay. So we get rid of the NDD and we'll be able to get rid of the, the PZ as well. So, let's see. Vine Lash coming out. Nice, 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 nice. Max Strike, I imagine, comes out from the PZ. But where are you going? Uh, at least we've got the Vine Lash stacking as well, which is good. Max Strike. So we've just got the plus one at the minute. It does so much damage. Even minus one, it does so much damage, doesn't it? It's just ridiculous. It is actually ridiculous. Scrafty will be able to get the knockout here, which is good. And it all comes down to the last two Pokemon that he's got. Is it Ditto? We know one of them's Gengar. No item as well, so Crunch should be able to pick up the knockout onto it. We'll be able to take a Dazzle Gleam. Um, and we still got options with Torkoal in the back. We still got a turn of Max as well. It is the Ditto, yeah, of course. <laughs> it's always going to be the Ditto. The Ditto. Well. Ooh, it's Scrafty. Transformed into Scrafty. Huh. That's way better for us. That's, like, way better for us. Um, I mean, they do have Fake Out. But we just max quick the Gengar. Um, do we switch out? Yeah, we switch out. Let's switch out to Torkoal. Even though we're going to get rid of our son, I don't think we need it because I think necessarily we've kind of got this wrapped up. If we can intimidate the opposing Scrafty, they they have to lock into like pretty much Drain Punch, which then is not effective against Venusaur, or they lock into Crunch, which isn't effective against Scrafty. Or they do that. An ally switch. Okay. Didn't see this coming. First ally switch we've had in the X9 League. It's going to come. Max Quick, though. It's fine. We need that special defense boost. That's all we're really worried about at the moment. Um, and we can switch back into Scrafty. And the residual damage is going to be useful. Critical hit is useful there, of course. And Drain Punch, yeah, that makes sense. But you're not going to be doing too much to our Torkoal. Okay, well. We've got two more turns of that. So have we? Have we got two more turns of that? I think, yeah. I think we've got two more turns of the Vine Lash. We can check, can't we? Yeah, two more turns. Um. Yeah, we just. I think we just Earth Power the Gengar. We don't really need to worry. I mean, we can just body press the Scrafty as well. Although we might get Ally switched again. But I think 
Are we gonna see ally switch again? We can't play it to the ally switch. That's like that's a, a rule I have myself. I don't play it to it. If we get caught out by it, then fine. We've seen it. We've been caught out by it once, but we're not gonna we're not gonna play the mind games. We're just gonna attack where we should be attacking on the field. And like I say, if we get caught out by the ally switch again, then that's fair enough. But I don't think we will. I don't see an ally switch coming out this time, but I could be wrong. Yeah, we don't. Okay, shadow ball coming out. It's fine. Yeah, that just pox us. Oh, it's not even pocking our citrus berry. This will get rid of the Gengar. Ooh, just hangs on. So that's fine. I'm <laughs> cursed body activating. So that's all right. Crunch coming out. I was assuming that the Ditto would be scarfed, but the Ditto is not scarfed. Uh, so we've got this now. So the body press will be able to get the Scrafty and the, the residual damage will get the Gengar. So here we go. Um, we're going to be able to take a 1-0 lead. So that worked out pretty well for us. Um, but again, can't really rest on this. All right, Siri. Don't you hear when Siri does that? Good good game, good game, game one. Yeah, so hopefully Siri didn't bleed over that and ruin that too much for us, but we take an early lead. Like I say, we can't rely on that too much. I think we, the fact that we haven't given away that Hazard is, is scarfed, I think helps us out so much. Um, yeah, let's take the lead card and uh, play with the same rules. Because Charizard naturally outspeeds PZ. We know it wasn't scarfed. So I think we've got that going for us where we could go for that lead again. But then we have to look at what he could potentially bring that would make it a little bit more tricky for us, of course. Um, Slurpuff. Definitely be one. For sure. Bishop, I don't think is the play. I think you have to go. I think the the one thing that he could potentially do is is copy Charizard with his Ditto. It makes the Venusaur matchup a lot easier, like a way way easier because it means we don't have really a way to to hit the Charizard, which makes it quite tricky. Of course, um, Mimikyu is a nice option as well in this match, so we could mix things up a little bit. Um. But it means kind of dropping the Scrafty. But I don't necessarily think we need... Like, Scrafty's great, but I don't know if we kind of need the Scrafty, to be honest. We could go Torkoal, Charizard, Mimikyu, and Rhyperia in this one. Yeah, let's go for that. Let's go for it. Let's go for it. Let's mix it up. Let's bring the Trick Room. Let's bring the Rhyperia. Get some more points on that Rhyperia's board. Hopefully, it doesn't all go... Super bad. And we can see if we can pull another win off this week. That'll be good. Indeedy slip off. Okay, that's good. Um <laughs> I think what we'll do is just double heat wave, to be honest. Um the slip off will outspeed us, for sure. Does slip off get rock slide? Does it get rock slide? Potentially, potentially. Potentially it does, but we just need damage on the board at the minute. I mean, we could body press, but I think we get around the redirection. And I think double heat wave, like if Charizard gets the heat wave off, double heat wave will string shot. It's a nice option. That speed control is juicy. Juicy speed control, dropping our speed by two spot, two points. Light screen makes a lot of sense here. Okay, that's fine. Um, we'll get a double heat wave off regardless. This is gonna actually like do so much damage though. Um, and the heat wave from the Torkoal, not as much, but still good chip all the same. Uh, solar power gonna chip in there as well. Um, could body press yeah I think we just double heat wave again to be honest and try and clear the field because if we get rid of these two he's only got two Pokemon left and then it gets a little bit easier for us although if the Gengar's in the back although we you know Mimikyu is something that we we, we, we said we can definitely go with Mimikyu for um, our alternative Maxmon if we want um, we don't necessarily need to rely on it 
too heavily. And there's also the option here where you could switch in like something like Rhyperia and Mimikyu, but again, I don't really want to switch anything in. I don't want the disguise just getting broken for for free. Um, fake tears and expanding force. Ooh, into the Torkoal. So it gives Charizard a free turn, um, which is amazing. Can Torkoal take this? We're pretty specially defensively built. You know, we do take it. So we're going to get that double heat wave off, which is amazing. Um, and then you still got the option where we can max Charizard if we want, depending on what's left, you know. Um, heat wave hits, that's ideal. That should, yeah, let's clear the field. Okay, so. Brilliant. Getting rid of the redirection early on is spot on. And Torkoal wasting a heat wave. You're all right though, Torkoal. You've done a good job so far. Depends what's left. Now we need to be, nothing's maxed yet. You've got you to keep that in mind. We're minus two speed. PC. That's not ideal. And what is it going to be? The ditto? The ditto. It is going to be the ditto. Okay. It's a tricky switching stuff in. I don't think we switch anything in. I really don't. I think we just let these two go down. We try and get a body press off onto the PZ. Um, and we, we just go for a heat wave. If PZ goes for the tall call here, then they get punished with it as Charizard. If not, we get a, we get a body press off. A whole, well, we do get a body press off because I don't think the opposing Ditto is going to be able to to knock out our our Torkoal. The only issue would be would be if that Torkoal starts going for Iron Defenses, and then things get very difficult very quickly because then Rhyperia is going to really struggle to deal with that Torkoal. I, 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 I. So here it goes. Yeah, the Iron Defense. It might have been worth us Iron Defense in at the same time. Potentially, because then we can protect the next turn when we Trick Room. Yeah. Mm. It depends. If they go for Iron Defense here, then it, we're still not in a bad spot. Because under Trick Room, we'll, we'll still be the fastest talk hall. Uh, Max Strike coming out. Yeah, it's, it's, it's all about the Charizard. And the body press damage, you know, will be useful onto this PZ. It will be useful, there's no doubt about it. So it's not it's not a terrible play. Be interesting to see what he goes for. If it is the Iron Defense or not. Yeah, it is Iron Defense. So we get a free turn, but the Iron Defense coming out, making it a bit tricky for us. Very tricky. Right, okay. Why are we bringing... And obviously with the Psychic Train still in effect, we do get that Misty, um, that Psychic Seed boost. So, that does help us. Do you attack into the Torkoal now though? That's the thing, or do you go after the Mimikyu and like double up into that slot? I think you go after the Torkoal, in all honesty. Um, we Trick Room, we just Trick Room, yeah. But I think they've got the chance to, to Iron Defense again here, which is really not ideal for us, you know. But we do have, we could max, we could max Mimikyu. We could, we could max Mimikyu. Um, because the Torkoal's going to struggle to to hit the Mimikyu. Can't hit us with Body body Press. Quick Claw. See what? Oh, this is the worst, because if they Heat Wave and then they max... Right, uh, max darkness. Okay, they go for an iron defense again. That's all right. That's all right. Okay. <sighs> Thinking like the heat wave there and like max darkness. That would be the, the most terrible combination. Stop our trick room and then things go downhill very quickly from there. Oh my god. Torkoal can't even take that. Oh my. That is rough. That is rough. Well. <sighs> Yeah, I don't know if we're going to be able to beat the Torkoal, to be honest. I really don't. I really don't think we're going to be able to beat it. I think we've been beat by our own. <sighs> um, hmm. We have to max the Rhyperia. And I think we go after... I mean... Do we leave the PZ alone? Can we max quick? 
not going to do much. But I mean, if they body press right here, activate our weakness policy, then. I think we go after PZ. The only issue is, do we can trick room. I think we trick room now. I think we max. We trick room. Reverse the dimensions. Get them to activate our weakness policy this turn. We twist the dimensions round. And then we can attack into the, the Torque Wall the next turn. The only issue is if this PZ protects here. If it max guards, then this, this is a bad plan. Because then we're going to have to max guard ourselves the next turn. Trick room again. It gets very complicated. Okay, there's a heat wave. That's fine. So the disguise burst. That's alright. That's alright though. Max quick. Hopefully this is enough. Which it is. Okay. Okay. So critical hit that might matter that might have mattered. I don't know. I don't know if it mattered. If it did, then that's a huge 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 for us okay heat wave and now we trick room get rid of the trick room now we're the fastest thing on the field uh, and we've got two turns of max left sun fades which is which is what we need which is what we need and the light screen wears off for them but it doesn't really make any difference right now for us um okay i think the only thing we can do is Let's see, let's see. There you both want there. You could get uh, the chip. The chip from Max Rockfall is is probably useful because that residual chip is gonna be way more useful, I think. Um can't burn it because it's a ditto and it is a fire type at the minute will phantom force. Okay. They protect Phantom Force. Oh my gosh, does literally nothing. Does nothing. Does nothing. And they still got a citrus berry. I worry, you know, about the body press getting us. Like, they got a body presses this turn, or they're just waiting for us not to be maxed anymore. So there's a the Phantom Force doing minimal minimal damage after this plus four defense let's see what this does minimal damage not very much no it doesn't even, well it's gonna proc that citrus berry which is good i think if they yeah he's been smart about it he has been very smart about it where he doesn't want to to activate our weakness policy because he knows it's the one thing that can oh they don't have the citrus berry of course they got the quick claw okay um yeah, I'm thinking of my talk hall. So we protect the Phantom Force again. We might be able to do this with just Mimikyu, I think. We might need to get some... If he iron defense is here, that's terrible for us. But I think you body press this turn, hoping that you get the Rhyperia. Yeah. It makes sense, too. You can't protect this next turn. So, like, either Rhyperia goes down here. Um, but we have to Rock Slide. And hope we get a flinch. Because a flinch would be pretty huge for us. Unless Rhyperia takes a plus. Are you kidding? Are you actually kidding? You kidding? You kidding? You kidding? We take it though. Oh my god. We, we, we've got this now then. Because we just earthquake. Rhyperia you beast. I can't believe you just took that. I mean we have got a very defensively built one. So I mean that is, that's amazing. Okay. that that That's ideal. And now we can just go Earthquake, Phantom Force. And that should do it. That should do it. That should do it. And that gives us the victory. No Protect coming out. An Earthquake. Plus two. Mimikyu avoids. And... There we go. We get it. We get the win. We get the win. And that takes us to 5-2, I believe. I believe our record's 5-2. Let's have a look, I think. Yeah, 5-2. Five wins, two losses. 
So that is amazing. Great game to Viz. It was a pleasure playing him. I, as I mentioned to him before, I'm a big fan. I watch a lot of his content, especially when he was a singles player, and then a lot more when he turned over to VG because we are like we're, we're embroiled in the VG community. So um, it would be great to see him kind of continue on with that. Go and give him some support over in his channel. He's got an absolutely huge following. So we're like a minnow on YouTube compared to Viz and like he does amazing stuff so yeah check him out if you haven't already I'm sure all of you have and um, see the battle from his side of the field uh, it was a pleasure playing him hope you enjoyed this week leave your comments down below let me know what your thoughts are and uh, hopefully you're looking forward to week eight versus Mandy B and uh, you know Bryce is going to be one of the hardest opponents I think we'll have uh, I mean we have every opponent's really hard but Bryce is absolutely crushing it in the x9 league this week so we've got some big preparations to do for next week big shout out again to viz all these socials are down in the description below and uh, thank you so much for tuning in friends and i'll catch you all for another episode very soon so until then take care and bye bye